So, this is what happens. These aliens land, right? Not like a big invasion or nothing. More like a survey. They show up in one of those little ships. The kind that people used to freak out about in the 1950s. But nowadays, everyone's so distracted with their phones, nobody even notices when one lands near human settlement. The aliens are all serious, too. They've got their tech, their scanners, and their weird language that sounds like a dial-up modem. They're here to figure out if Earth is worth their time. They start with the usual trees, water, air. They're all professional, not interested in anything that doesn't come up in their reports. They don't even care about animals unless they're unusual, like the blue poison frogs or the fish that can climb trees. And people. People don't even make the cut at first. They're just background noise. But then one of the aliens, let's call it the tall one, picks up something weird. The tall one's been scanning a building on the outskirts of this small town. It's one of those spots that used to be popular, but now it's just another place to pass through. The alien finds a pile of junk that humans have just left lying around. Old machines, rusted tools, things that don't work anymore. And it's confused. Like, why would anyone keep this? That's when they notice a group of humans nearby. They're loud, unorganized, just milling around like they've got nowhere better to be. But the tall one zooms in on them. There's something odd going on. These people are putting together a bunch of stuff that doesn't look like it belongs together. Like a lawnmower engine with an old fan and a couple of busted solar panels. The aliens don't get it. There's no pattern, no efficiency, no logic to it. Then the tall one starts scanning what these humans are doing. And, for the first time, it has to send a message back to the others. Something's up. They're not following any rules. The other aliens don't believe it at first. They're used to civilizations being all about order. Like everything is supposed to fit into neat little boxes. But these humans, they're different. The tall one points out a guy who's trying to fix something by hitting it with a rock. The other aliens are like, the other aliens are like, that's not how technology is supposed to work. But it does. The thing actually starts working again. The aliens are just silent because nothing in their data prepares them for this. They've been to a bunch of planets, seen a bunch of intelligent species, but none of them operate like this. They're all thinking, these humans, they're unpredictable. Next, the aliens observe something even crazier. They see a bunch of humans racing, but not like normal races where it's all organized and people stick to the rules. No, these humans are racing an old beat, up cars that they've modified with parts that definitely don't belong in cars. One guy's car has the engine from a motorcycle strapped onto the back of a van. The whole thing looks like it's about to explode, but he's grinning like a madman. The aliens are baffled. They check their data again, making sure they haven't missed anything. But the more they watch, the less sense it makes. These humans, they're not just surviving, they're having fun with it. They're taking things that should be impossible and making them work, even if it's just for a little while. The tall one decides to dig deeper. It picks up on this group of humans working together on some kind of project. They're not engineers, not scientists, just regular people who should probably be doing something else. But they're building something big. The aliens can't figure out what it is at first. It's like a mix between a rocket and a roller coaster, held together with duct tape and hope. The tall one tries to scan it for a blueprint, something to give it a clue. But there's nothing. But there's nothing it up as they go. These people are just making it up as they go. The aliens start to realize that these humans, they don't always plan ahead. Sometimes they just dive in, and somehow it works out. Then the day comes when the humans decide to test their creation. The aliens are on edge, expecting it to fail, to break apart, or to just explode. 
They've got their scanners ready, ready to record the disaster. But that's not what happens. The humans get this thing running, and it takes off. It's not perfect. It's noisy. It shakes. And it looks like it could fall apart at any moment, but it flies. The aliens just stand there, their scanners glitching out because they don't know how to process what they're seeing. These humans, they've taken scraps, junk, and dreams, and they've made something that actually works. The tall one sends a final report back to its superiors. Humans are not logical. They're not efficient, but they are something else. After that, the aliens decide it's time to leave. They pack up their equipment, make sure they haven't left any traces, and head back to their ship. They're not interested in conquering Earth, not after what they've seen. They can't predict what humans might do next. And that's what makes them dangerous. Because humans, they don't follow the rules. They make them up as they go. And as the ship takes off, the tall one takes one last look at the planet below. It knows that somewhere down there, those humans are already working on the next crazy idea, and it can't help but feel a little bit of respect, maybe even a hint of fear. The aliens didn't come to conquer. They came to understand, but they leave realizing that they might never fully understand humans, and that's probably for the best. The aliens leave Earth behind, but they can't stop thinking about what they saw. It's like a bug in their system, something they can't quite shake. They visited countless worlds, seen all sorts of life forms, but none of them got under their skin like humans did. They're still trying to figure out why. Back on their home planet, they report to their leaders. They go over the data, the recordings, the scans, but the higher-ups are just as puzzled. They expected to find a primitive species, maybe a little chaotic, but not like this. Not this weird mix of recklessness and creativity that makes no sense, and all the sense at the same time. One of the leaders asks the tall one, can they be a threat? The tall one hesitates. It doesn't want to admit it, but the answer is complicated. Not in the way we understand. It finally says, they don't have the technology to harm us. Not directly. But they're unpredictable. We can't predict what they'll do. So that makes them dangerous in a different way. The leaders don't like hearing that. They're used to order control, knowing what's coming next. But the tall one's words hang in the air and nobody knows what to do with them. They could wipe out humanity easily. No question about it, but that doesn't feel like the right move. It's like killing a wild animal because it doesn't behave like a house pet. It doesn't sit right with them. So, they decide to watch. They send more ships, not to interfere, just to observe. They want to understand if what the tall one saw was a fluke or if it's something deeper. The ships stay out of sight, cloaked and silent, gathering data. And the more they watch, the more confused they get. Humans keep doing things that don't make sense. They invent gadgets that break almost as soon as they're built, then they laugh about it and start over. They waste time on things that don't seem to have any purpose. Games, jokes, art. But somehow, these things seem to matter to them, maybe more than anything else. They risk their lives for reasons that the aliens can't compute. They explore, fight, and build with a kind of relentless energy that doesn't fit into any of the neat categories the aliens have. And then there's the way they come together. The aliens see humans helping each other out in ways that don't make logical sense. Strangers working side by side. Communities forming around shared goals or just because they like being around each other. The aliens don't have a word for it, but they start to understand that humans don't just survive. They live. And that makes them different from any species they've ever encountered. Time passes, and the aliens start to realize something else. Humans are changing. 
They're learning from their mistakes, getting better at building, at organizing, at surviving. They're still unpredictable, still chaotic. But there's a method to the madness now. The aliens watch as humans make breakthroughs in technology, pushing the boundaries of what they can do. And the craziest part, they're doing it faster than anyone expected. The Tall One sends another report, they adapt, faster than we thought possible. They take what they have, no matter how broken or incomplete, and they make it work. We need to keep watching. This could be important. So they keep watching, and slowly, a new kind of respect starts to grow. The aliens still don't understand humans, not fully, but they start to appreciate what they're seeing. These humans, they're not like anyone else. They're scrappy, stubborn, and more than a little reckless, but they've got something that the aliens can't ignore. One day, a human-built ship leaves Earth. It's not much by the alien standards. Small, rough around the edges. Not very fast. But it's a start. The aliens watch as this little ship makes its way out into space, crewed by a handful of humans who are excited, scared, and determined all at once. They don't have a clear destination, just a direction. They're explorers, doing what humans do best, diving into the unknown. The aliens could intercept the ship, make contact, even destroy it if they wanted to. But they don't. They let it pass, curious to see what happens next. They've come to realize that humans are worth keeping around, not because they're a threat, but because they're different. Because they're different, because they bring something new to the universe that nobody else does. So they keep their distance, watching as humanity takes its first steps beyond their home planet. The Tall One updates its report one last time. They are unpredictable, yes, but they are also brave. They might stumble, they might stumble, they might stumble, they might fail, but they will keep going, and that makes them worth watching. As the human ship disappears into the vastness of space, the aliens finally understand. It's not about technology or logic or efficiency. It's about the spark that drives humans to do the impossible, to reach beyond their grasp, to make something out of nothing, it's about the fire that makes them who they are. And in the end, the aliens realize that they're not just watching humanity anymore. They're rooting for them.